I want to watch this video. It's a Peter Thiel who has been historically kind of flipping back and forth on Bitcoin. But this is from 2017. Let me bring this up. It's from 2017, Peter Thiel. While I'm skeptical of most cryptocurrencies, I think most people are underestimating Bitcoin. So the Bitcoin price was 5,700 when this was recorded back in 2017. So let's listen to this, what he has to say, and then we'll talk about it. This is on Mornings with Maria. Oh, I don't even have it loaded up. You know, the one other one that I've, I've, I've been looking at a lot more have been the uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, and, uh, and while I'm skeptical of, of most of them, uh, I, I do think people are, are, um, are a little bit, uh, are maybe, maybe underestimating Bitcoin uh, specifically because it is like, it's like a reserve form of money. It's like gold um, and, um, and it's just a store of value. You don't actually need to use, to use it to make payments. And it's been, you know, it's, there's about $70 billion worth of Bitcoin in the world. There's $9 trillion worth of gold. And, um, and if Bitcoin ends up being the cyber equivalent of gold, you know, it has a, it has a, it has a great potential left. So that's, and it's a, it's a very different kind of thing from what people in, Sil Sil people in Silicon Valley normally focus on companies, not, you know, algorithms or protocols. But uh, this may be, this may be uh, one exception that's, uh, that's very underestimated. Well, people question it. And I know there's been so much debate about Bitcoin, but they question it because what is it based on? I mean, you see that the dollar is based on, you know, the, the trust of the treasury, the trust of the U.S. government. What is Bitcoin based on? Well, the, the argument, it's, it's based on the, um, on the security of the math, which tells you that it can never be, um, it can never be diluted by a government. It can never, um, it can never be, it can't be hacked. Um, and it's a form of money that's absolutely, uh, that's secure in an absolute way. Um, and uh, of course, you could ask the same questions about gold. That's why I use the gold analogy. You could say, what's, what is gold based that's on? True. Why is gold yeah. valuable? Well, it's a, it's a tangible asset, though, gold. It's a tangible asset, but it's also hard to mine. So if it was easy to mine gold, then it wouldn't be that valuable because we would just have way more gold. So Bitcoin is also, um, it's, it's, it's mineable like gold. It's hard to mine. It's, it's actually harder to mine than gold. And so in that sense, um, it's, it's more constrained. And so, yeah, there, there are a number of things that, uh, that, uh, that I think make it somewhat similar to gold. And then the question is just, does this become, does this become um, more widely? And, and it's anonymous, widely. right? I mean, that's one of the, the beauties of it. You it's can be anonymous using Bitcoin. Yeah, it's, it's half anonymous, half not. So it's, it's, again, this intermediate thing. There's a question whether that's right or not. But it's, it's a bearer instrument. So if you, if you have the Bitcoin, if you know the key, you can, you can go anywhere. Most of the time, um, most securities are registered, not bearer security. So it's a very unusual kind of a security. So a lot, a lot of things uh, happening there, a lot of things that he talked about. This, keep in mind that that was seven years ago now. So he was quite, quite a ways ahead of his time. We watched a video of him a couple of weeks ago on the show saying that he wishes he would have bought more Bitcoin, but he's still kind of uncertain about it. I think, I don't know. I don't know his, his whole thing here, but that's not really the point. Forget the person here. Let's focus on what he's talking about. And the one thing that really stood out for me when I watched that interview or clip from seven years ago was the anonymous part of it. And it got me thinking a little bit more. It got me thinking because we, we talk about no KYC versus KYC here a lot. And we obviously want to encourage people to get as much non-KYC Bitcoin as possible. And I think that there is going to be an, a need for that. I think there's going to be demand for it. And especially if you want to remain completely private, completely away from the system. But unfortunately, I think that for the most things and how this is going to all play out, I think that you're going to have to still have a certain stack of your Bitcoin. If you want to like go to the bank and say, this is my Bitcoin. I want to take out some dollars. And then with those dollars, I think you can be very private with that, whether you're using cash, whether you're putting your Bitcoin instead of a bank, maybe there's Fetty Mints. And maybe you put up, you know, 2 million sats into a Fetty Mint and you start it with your own community there and that's held. And then you can use that to transact very privately. So you put take Bitcoin off layer one, put it into a Fetty Mint. 
with, uh, I don't know, X amount of friends or people within your community, whatever that is. But then you you get an exchange for that Bitcoin. You get a very private currency, which is eCash. And I think that a lot of Bitcoiners, they think that it's very, you know, it's going to be transparent for the right people in terms of government, big companies, public companies, people who we need to be auditing. It's going to be transparent for them because that's what they're going to be using mostly is layer one. But for people like us, we could just put a stack of Bitcoin or KYC Bitcoin into a Fedi Mint or into a bank, take money out of that. And that's what we can use to be much more private with it. So I just wanted to highlight that aspect. He talked about the gold too. We've, we've kind of beat that one to death, I think, on this show. Uh, they are hard currencies. We've never had that before. 50 years, we've never had a hard currency before. And with gold, it was pretty good. We, I mean, the world was a much better place when we had gold as our standard, our reserve. And everything was backed by gold because it's hard to mine. If it was easy, like he said, it wouldn't have any value. You could just go out. And I mean, that's kind of the comparison now between Bitcoin and gold is that if gold really shot up and there was a very high demand for gold, we could just go find more. There's so much gold in the world and beyond on earth, but there's no more Bitcoin. You cannot create Bitcoin. You cannot go out into the mountains and hire a million people to look for Bitcoin. Not going to happen. You can get a whole bunch of miners to try to hit the next block. But that's only going to increase the, the demand. It's going to be more difficult to mine. It's going to bring in more competition. But And there's still no guarantee. It's all based on luck. So you can increase your odds. But there's no certainty that you're going to find more Bitcoin. And that's the beautiful thing about Bitcoin. Bitcoin.